Today's episode on reawakening. So the topic I want to go through today is a very important subject that people in the church kind of avoid. It's what's the use of the law today? Modern Christianity, which you see on Sundays, I want to admit, is pretty much garbage. And I, I love the... Now, I'm not burying everybody out there. There's some good churches that really preach out of the Word of God. Because the Word of God is amazing out here. It is amazing. And there's some amazing preachers that have been in my life. Chris Vitarelli has been amazing. Um, Andy frud has done a great job. Then I have... Um, Ryan Pixton and Leah Tightsworth and Eric Oliver that have done a good job mentoring me through the years. But so today's topic is uses the modern day use of the law. So to understand the law, when it says, you know, I came to not abolish the law, but to fulfill the law, what does that mean? What does that really mean? Do we have to sit there and go through the laws and stone the adulterer and stone all these different people? Or does it mean that there is no more rules or anything else or regulations? I'm being kind of fictitious. I know the answer to that. So, but to, so to understand the law, we must understand the categories of the law. There's three categories now. Ceremonial, moral, and judicial. There's three different categories of the law. So, Jesus being the high priest in the order of Melchizedek can tell you what laws you have to follow and what you don't have to follow. If that makes sense. So the ceremonial laws were fulfilled at the resurrection. Hebrews 9. Now when these things have been, have been thus prepared, the priests always went into the first part of the tabernacle performing the services, but into the second part, the high priest went alone once a year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the uh, people's sins committed in ignorance in the Holy Spirit, indicating this, that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was still standing. It was symbolic for the present time, in which both gifts and sacrifices are offered, which cannot make him who performs the service perfect in regard to the conscience, concerned only with food and drinks and various washings and fleshly ordinances imposed until the time of reformation. But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come, with a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once and for all, having um, obtained eternal redemption for the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of heifer, sprinkling of the unclean and the sanctifies for the pur purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this reason, he is a mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgression under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. For where there is a testament, there also there must also be the necessary, necessary be the death of the tester. For the for a testament is in force after men are dead, since it, it has no power at all while the te testator lives. Therefore, not even the first covenant was dedicated without blood. For when the Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water, scarlet wool, and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you. Then likewise he sprinkled with blood the tabernacle and the vessels, all the vessels of the ministry, and according to the law, 
Almost all things are purified with blood, and without shedding of the blood, there is no remission. So, taking a look here at this. So, Jesus coming as the high priest. So, they go to the holiest of holies, okay? So, now, now you don't have to worry about what you drink and what you can eat or anything else. Very, very simple. Nothing became perfect until Jesus came. So there is two halves of Shoal. One half of Shoal are the, is the good part of Shoal, and the other part of Shoal is the hell of Shoal. If that makes any sense. Or it's called Hades. Like, Abraham's bosom, which is up here, has been evacuated. So there is no Abraham's bosom after the resurrection. Jesus went in there, took the saints out of there. So, quite simple. No, you don't have to sacrifice anything more. You don't even need to do anything. You don't have to, I mean, from like a festivals. You don't have to do the feasts. Because God doesn't command you to do the feasts in this era. So, I hope that makes that clear. Now, let's go with the, let's go with the uh, judicial law. The judicial law applies to Israel and Israel alone. The way they handle their servants and how they handle the adulterers and other laws. So how you judge is quite simple here. See, Leviticus 27. These are the commandments which the Lord commanded Moses for the children of Israel on Mount Sinai. So this is, so each time you look in the book of Leviticus and, you know, the Lord you know, commanded Moses speak this to the children of Israel over and over again. Quite simple. And he didn't want to sit there and make America into a second Israel or Canada into a second Israel or anything else. You know, like if you... Um, and it's quite clear. It says in the New Testament, the Lord, he put the governments in charge not to execute the judicial law like it was in Israel, as it would be too difficult and would be missing the point. Romans 13, Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever exists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves, for the rulers are not a terror to good works but to evil, do you want to be afraid to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you'll have praise from the same. For he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is God's ministry, an avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Therefore you must be subject not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. For because of you, you also because of this you also pay taxes. For they are God's ministers, attending continually to this thing, to this very thing. Render therefore to all their due taxes, to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. So quite simple is God put these governments over there with their own set of laws. Not to make another Israel. And see, to be quite clear with this, if they ask you to do something ungodly, you don't follow their law. That's quite clearly in uh, the book of Peter. That is, he, they're saying, do not do something stupid. Like, if it's 55, follow the speed limit at 55 miles per hour. If, it's, if they're asking you not to videotape, a cop, don't videotape the police officer. That's, that's retarded. That's ridiculous. I mean, that's absolutely ridiculous. They sit there and just break the law to break the law, but if you get arrested because you're preaching the gospel, that's a great thing. You're doing God's work. They'll be judged. They already have the person that's going to judge them because if God put them in charge, you know what he can do? He can sit there and just take a hammer and go smash. So now we're going to go to the, finally, since we're not going to execute like Israel executed, and we're not going to um, sacrifice, 
we're not going to take the book of Leviticus to a zoo and get thrown out of the zoo because we decided to do a sacrifice. Oops. But now we're going to apply, we're going to do an application of the law to today. How do we apply the law? So the moral law still stand firm. You have to agree that rape is wrong. If you don't, you have serious psychological issues. So, 1 Timothy 1. Andy, the book was named after your son. That's great. So, but we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, knowing that, this, that the law was not made for the righteous person, but for the lawless and the insubordinate, for the ungodly and for the sinners, for the unholy, profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and if there's any other, any other thing that's contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed in my uh, trust. Quite simple. If you fall in that category, we've all fallen there before. We've all probably fornicated at some point. Some of us have been sodomites. Some of us, that's, um, that talks about homosexuality. You know, there's some people that have kidnapped. We've all probably lied at some point. It's to sit there and narrow our morals. Put our morals back together. It's to show us that our, um, we, our morals are, um, flat. Like, we need Jesus. We need a Savior. So, also, the law keeps the mouth shut. Because if somebody says, well, I'm sitting here having sex with this girl, and it's not my wife. And you can't say this is ungodly. Somebody, you know, somebody could say that to me. I said, look me in the eyes. What's thou shall not commit adultery mean? What's it mean? Thou shall not commit adultery. Thou shall not bear false witness. What's it mean? Can you expound? You know what that does? It grabs their tongue. So, Romans 3, it is written... There is no one, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have, they have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good, no, not one. Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues have practiced deceit. And the poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood, shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of pieces have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. So now we know whatever the law says. It says to those who are under the law that every mouth may be so, uh, stopped, and the, all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. By the law is the knowledge of sin. So it gives you knowledge to, to the sin. Like, I'm going to go crack open, because I just thought of this right now. And actually read the Ten Commandments back. I'm not going to read 613 laws. Even though I know everybody wants to hear my voice. And I mean everybody. So, in Exodus 20, And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of everything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow to them, down to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the antiquity of the fathers upon to the children, the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but show mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commands. You shall not take the Lord your, your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold them guiltless, guiltless who takes his name in vain, Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all the work. 
do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not do work, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor your mother and honor your father, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord God has given you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor is anything that is in your neighbor's. So now all the people witnessed the thunderings, the lightning flashes, and the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. When the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar. So, see right here it says, you shall not murder. You see, American law works like this. If you um, shoot somebody, you're going to go to jail for this much time. No, God's law says, you shall not murder. He said, yo... This is my world. This is my world. You're going to do what I tell you to do. You shall not commit adultery. What's it mean? What's it physically mean? Guys, I do this because I love you. I really do this be because I love you. And if you don't know Jesus, get, a re get your relationship with him today. Repent for your sins. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He, he died and he rose, rose in three days. And, you know, now, and you're in sin. If you don't know Jesus, you're in sin. It's quite obvious. There's 613 laws. You can't keep them. That's the point of the law, to show them that you can't keep them. Turn, turn your trust to Jesus Christ today. So... And guys, if you know Jesus and you're not sharing Jesus, you share it with your friends and your family. There's no more hatred towards a person than not to share Jesus with them. To sit there and let them choke to death on their own sins. Jesus loves you, and I love you so much. Peace.